morning everybody um, this video is at the request of uh, a lot of people asking me like about um, how to cook like inside and things like that I said we're gonna be fasting um, because I think that that's what we should be doing um, also in reference to um, the three days of darkness in general um, I was just reading the gospel of Gamaliel this morning and um, I honestly was crying a lot reading it because um, it talks about like what Mary had to go through and um, the different things that happened um, with Pilate and um, the centurion and things like that. Just behind the scenes things that we wouldn't even know about because the disciples, they all ran away. So the only people that had an actual first-hand account of what happened a lot of them were um the leaders of the priesthood some of which were evil but many of them were not and they started to believe in jesus christ when all the miracles were happening and during that time um in the gospel of gamaliel it speaks of the earthquake happening and it speaks of of the darkness the three days of darkness is when jesus went down while he was in the tomb, he went down to free all the patriarchs and all the saints from the underworld. And I've said that from the Gospel of Nicodemus, but nobody really like listens to that. Nobody listens to that, that gospel. It's not in our canon. That was meant to be that way so that in hindsight, the Lord could show that no man had you know, superior wisdom over the Lord God to show people all these things in the end time. And Jesus set all those gospels aside for the end so that in the end it would be a living metaphor for what happened to him because they in the tribunals and all the different things that they did to the word of god it showed what they would do to him as a man so it's like a, a living metaphor so basically all the books and all the things that they removed from what would be allowed as the measuring came to be the word of god now as they came out of the earth in these past you know even this century in the 1940s and 50s and, and like the Nagamati Codices, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls, that is the word of God rising from the dead, coming out of the earth. It's all symbolic. All of these things are symbolic of what would happen. And so the three days of darkness is the Bible. It is exactly what happened in the Bible. It's predicted all throughout the Old Testament and into the New Testament. And Jesus is coming back right now. So that's why it is all throughout the Bible, it is prophetic that this would happen. Everybody's talking about the earthquake dreams they're having and all these things that they're having for for uh, dreams of the, the tsunamis and all these things, the, the judgments upon America and things like that. But through these judgments, the Lord God Almighty is going to make a, a wonderful and a beautiful thing to happen. Jesus was on the earth for 40 days once he came out of the tomb and he was preaching and ministering and people were rising from the dead and a lot of miracles were happening and nobody ta nobody talks about this nobody talks about the fact all the amazing things that the lord did in those times before he went back to be with the father and just like that it, the same is happening now and the same thing is going to happen where there's going to be an earthquake there's going to be three days of darkness just like there was when jesus died on the cross and then there's going to be 40 days of us ministering to people and telling them about jesus and then we're going up it's the same thing and all these people are telling me, oh, it's not scriptural, it's not scriptural, then you don't read your Bible. Not, not only do you not read your Bible, but you don't even read the stuff that proves the Bible is true. All the stuff they removed. And I've spoken of this many times in my, in my channel that not probably many people have heard if you're just new to the channel. But there are three testaments. The Father's Testament is the Old Testament. The Son's Testament is the New Testament. And the Holy Spirit's Testament is all the books that were removed that were old texts that, that are coming back now because many of the disciples knew about these texts. And like I said before also, Peter represents the church. John represents the elect. And James represents the Jews. So a lot of the sim symbolism that you see in the Bible represents these people. 
So like when Jesus calls to Peter and he says, come out to me. And then all the winds and the wind and the waves are going around. And then Peter gets nervous. That represents the church. They're nervous about the winds and the waves, which are doctrines, the doctrines that other denominations and people say, uh, you know, about the Bible. It, it makes the church nervous if, you know, those doctrines come up and you're like, well, I don't know. I don't know. And that's what these waverers of the sea are. The people that are leaving comments saying like, oh, that's not true. I don't believe that. And oh, Jesus is never coming back. You know, people talk about about him coming back and it's never going to happen no it is going to happen and all these things are leading up to the signs of that and people are saying oh i don't know when this is going to happen what are the signs that this is going to happen i don't what wouldn't god send you a sign well i'll tell you one thing somebody left a comment about this earlier this morning and i also heard it before is that there's going to be like an aurora borealis or something like that in the sky and then the three days of darkness will come and I heard it before, and a woman, or a man, I'm, I'm not sure because it doesn't um, have a feminine, I don't think, um, tagline in the, the uh, YouTube name, but um, I believe it was a woman, though, said that they dreamed that there were lights in the sky before the three days of darkness came. Multiple people are telling me, people that don't have, you know, 25,000 subscribers and all this stuff, just regular people like me, because only two months ago I had 72 subscribers. Who cares about your subscriber count or how many people watch your video? Who cares about that? If you can help one person, then you're doing your part. And we are supposed to be the body of Christ. How would I like it if my arm... If, if this represents the body of Christ and my arm just kept saying, oh, I'm never going to help you hammer that. I'm never going to help you build that. I'm never going to help you do that. How, would, how is that being the body of Christ? If you're just putting everybody down, you're not contributing, contributing anything to the actual, you know, you're asking for the scripture, but you're not giving any scripture. All you're doing is saying you prophesied wrong and you said this wrong. Those scriptures in the Bible are talking about people that really did prophesy wrong. But I'm not. It's biblical what I'm saying. So that being said, I have a bunch of stuff right here. I'm just going to show you different cheap, inexpensive ways to light your home, to keep warm. You can use some of them during, some of them after. Some of them you can't really use inside because um, you might get headaches and stuff like that because it's like kerosene and stuff. But I'm just going to show you anyway. Obviously, number one, unscented candle. This is cotton and this is a cotton ball dipped in vaseline you can buy this for a dollar or two dollars i think is this and i think this entire bag of cotton balls was like a dollar so if you light this uh, cotton by itself it's not going to do the same thing as if you light it with vaseline on it instant candle two seconds doesn't cost hardly anything if you don't have money this is an excellent way to do uh, a candle in your house all you got to do is put it on a plate and it'll burn for i'd guess this would burn for probably like 20 minutes and you can still see all right this is obviously a camp lantern this costs about six seven to ten dollars depending on where you go and this will last I don't know, probably a few days, like maybe even longer, depending on how much you use it. Um, it will not cause you to like become sick if you burn it in your house. It's pretty, uh, you know, fine to, to use unventilated, but I wouldn't use it like constantly because like they get kind of hot and um, I don't know. I just don't trust something that's made out of like this kind of metal, but it's up to you. And what you should do is always keep these on hand, which are extra wicks and the fuel. All right, this is my favorite option because of all of its uses, um, and that is these propane propane tanks. But the mini ones cost like anywhere between four dollars is the lowest I've seen, and like seven fifty something like that. This would last, depending on usage, like for a lantern, probably eight hours. So. This is the lantern that I have. I have multiple ones. Like this is a one, a one burner. Um, so it's not super bright, but it has this blocking thing. So it's not like so bright in your eyes. Um, but that does need to be ventilated if you're going to use it for a long time indoors. The reason I like these tanks so much is because you can use them for other things. So if you want to start a fire outside, this is what I used to start my fires because it's like way better than a match. It just lights it in two seconds. It doesn't really matter, you know, how 
how damp it is or whatnot, it'll burn it, all the dampness off and you'll be fine in a few minutes. Also, other option, heater. You can use the same propane tank for this heater. Um, if you're in a small area with your family and you just want to get some heat in the area and then shut it off so that the fumes aren't killing you, you can do that. Um, I wouldn't leave it on while you're sleeping at all. It'll burn your sleeping bag, trust me. This, um, that lantern um, was probably $15. The, the camp um, heater was probably 20 and that the torch, this I think is 15 bucks at Home Depot. This I got at Savers. It's just a little camp stove. I have one other, uh, two other ones. One's just a burner by itself that um, has like a grate around it. This one I got at um, Goodwill for a dollar at Pay by the Pound. We have one here in New Hampshire and one in Maine. Um, but all you do is connect this piece like that and put the propane tank on and this this burner works if this one ever doesn't stops working because the knob fell off on that side but if this one ever stops working this one I'll use for parts on this one but the knob is broken so this one doesn't work very well so I'm just gonna leave that and just use this side I already tested it, it works great so that was for a dollar fifty all you gotta do is buy the gas this probably seen them everywhere they're the little things they use to heat up like food at like parties and that Chinese restaurants and stuff it's um called fancy heat uh methanol blue I won't also mention that you could mix it with gasoline to make napalm or something like that but um those last a long time as well you can use those to um heat your food this is the dual lantern I was telling you about for whatever reason I'm missing the metal piece on here I have tons of these so I'll probably just end up using it for parts or whatnot if I'm because really you need a way to like hold the top of this to move it around unless you're holding it by the propane tank at the bottom here um, but does create a huge amount of light I'll show you that in one second um, also this this is like an indeterminate amount of light source all it is is q-tips just all you do, just dip it in Vaseline, the end of it. You kind of have to make it like wispy. I don't really like that word, but um, there you go. Instant candle. Probably could get a thousand Q-tips for a dollar or something like that. And then all of these dipped in Vaseline, this would last you like many, many moons. So, hope that was helpful uh, as a brief, brief way um, to show you different options. So maybe if you don't have these, you can go out and buy them. Um, as I, I think I said it in the last video I was gonna do, I sometimes I restart my videos if I say something stupid because I don't edit my videos. Um, but this is for depending on your environment. If you're in a city environment, perhaps the this is not as effective for you because you're not going to be burning wood because there's no wood. Um, when I was super poor a couple, I forget how many years ago, um, my parents and I had a wood, coal, and um, oil burning stove and I used to spend two years literally in the basement. Um, sorry, I had a phone call. Um, I used to spend literally like two years in the basement um, like making fires for my family so that we could have hot water because um, we couldn't afford oil. Um, it turned out that um, we used to have to get, if we could afford it, we used to have to get, this is like during the 2008 recession, we used to have to get diesel from the gas station and pour it into our home with gallon cans. And I was always begging God, like, why are you doing this to me? God, this is so embarrassing. I can't even like have oil for my house. Like it's so embarrassing. And it turned out, after my house burnt down, that there was a guy, uh, a black guy named Jesse, and he had six kids, and his wife died. So he was in the middle of like Manchester, New Hampshire, like a horrible place to live. He was in a dump, and after my house burnt down, sorry, my dad keeps calling. After my house burnt down, we were in a rental home, and my dad had gotten a dryer for um, some people that needed it, and it turned out to be this guy. So I dropped the dryer off, and I went to the guy's house, and I had been helping him, you know, a little bit. I'm not going to go into it because I don't like talking about myself, but 
Turned out one night he couldn't afford heat for his family either. So what I did is I said, do you have oil? So I went to his house and I dumped the oil into his thing because I knew how to do that. And I lit his pilot for him and I got his, his oil going. So like real, realistically, you really don't know why you're going through things in life until you use those things to help other people. And a lot of the things that you see right here that I know, I attribute to, um, this homeless man that I used to help named Arthur and Arthur, the, the first time I helped him, he was carrying a gigantic propane tank on the back of his bicycle. Now, um, I, I've spoken many times about um, different things that are abominations to the Lord. Um, but what I'm going to say is, um, in my opinion, very important to remember. And um, Arthur, had I had helped him over the course of, um, I don't know, probably a year and a half when I'd see him on the road and stuff like that. He lived in the woods. Um, he was about 60 years old. He was in bad health. Um, he couldn't remember anything after you told it to him for five minutes later, he'd forget about it. He just remembered like who you were when you'd stop and say hi to him. But, um, he talked with a little bit of a lisp, but always like made me think maybe he was a homosexual and I, but I wasn't sure. So I didn't, you know, I didn't care. I just wanted to help him. Um, and one day, um, he kept coming to my parents' house cause he knew where they lived. And, um, and they were kind of upset about it because he would like show up and like knock on the door and stuff like that. And they'd like tell me to stop, t tell him to stop coming over and blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, what do you want me to do? He's, we're trying to, I'm trying to help him, you know? And uh, so one day he asked for some rope to tie up his, his, his camp and stuff. So I went to his camp. I rode my bike out to his camp and I, I, um, I went into his camp and I saw inside of his tent there was like propped up like some gay porn. And I was like, I was like looking around at his tent and his city and his little place that he made for himself. And I didn't judge him. I looked at myself and I said, Lord Jesus Christ, if you ever came to sit where I live and saw what, what I'm doing in my free time, if you know, if you just came and I wasn't ready, would you see the same types of things? And Jesus said, so how I find you, so shall I judge you. And so when I saw all the things that were at his camp that were, my, that were like abominations to God, I didn't judge him. I said to myself, I need to clean my life up. And ever since that time, I've really tried to change my life so that if God ever came to me, he would never look upon my life and say like, this is disgusting. Because to be honest, I was disgusted, not because of Arthur, but because of myself. And, you know, there was a lot of scenarios where I would go and help Arthur and it just changed my life. And I was like, you know, thankful to God that he put him in my life. And it's sad because um, after a while, we just stop, stopped seeing him ride his bike around town anymore. And I pray that he didn't die. And I always wonder about him and wonder where he went and things like that. But there's way more scenarios that happen with it. But I'd like to leave those to myself. Um, not only not to speak about things that might be considered good things I've done, but also because um, just for time constraints and things like that. But um, I pray that we all might do what I'm talking about and look inside of ourselves and think to ourselves, are we so prideful to think that we could go to heaven right now? Because... We don't know if we are fully ripe yet. We don't know if we have done all that the Lord has called us to do for his namesake. And, of course, we all want to go to heaven. We all want to get raptured and we all want to get out of here. But have we really done every single thing that God has commanded us to do in accordance with his will for our lives? Like, have we done it? And I don't think that we even know if that's possible or true. We, how would we know that that we've done everything according to God's will? Because Jesus Christ himself came down here as a humble servant. And, and working as a carpenter, you realize how humbling being a carpenter is sometimes when you have to clean up like people's like garbage and things like that. And, and it, he was a carpenter. And it's very humbling. And, um, you know, I've been one before, but coming back and doing it, it's, it's humbling again. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is God, John 1.1, 1, 1, 
he came down here to save us from our sins and he died even though he spent his whole life healing people and feeding the sick and feeding the poor and doing all these things he was crucified because the jews didn't like what he was saying and we just need to look inside of ourselves and think man did have i done all that i can do have i have i ran this race am i running right now am i trying right now the best that i can and if and if you aren't doing that don't be mad just start doing it just start doing it at some point start doing something whatever you can do for the lord jesus christ do it for him not for what you're going to get in heaven because i told you before i said that i'd clean toilets if i could just get into heaven i would clean toilets so i pray that these things that i've just shown you might help you i know some of them many people probably already know <clears throat> um and I said I would tell everybody the verses. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm probably going to do a live broadcast. It says you can do live broadcast for like eight hours. So as soon as I get an eight hour window later at night where I I don't feel tired and I'm not going to be like giving it like half of my time, like or like half of my power, I'm going to <clears throat> read you all of the texts from the Gospel of Nicodemus when Christ saved all of the saints from Adam all the way. Um, to the thief on the cross and saved them and took them out of Hades and brought them into paradise. Because that is the truth of the gospel, guys, is that we don't have to go to a place to wait for Jesus to die on the cross. He already broke the gates of brass. He already did the work. You just got to go around telling everybody the gospel, which is that Jesus did all the work. And you have to believe that Jesus is the, the Son of God. And you have to get rid of the abominations in your life. And you have to live a righteous life and daily ask Him to forgive you because you're going to sin still. It's not a once saved, always saved. It's not true. And the people that told you that, they had some sins in their life that you should not even, like, even hear about it so disgusting. So, I pray that you and your family might be safe and blessed in these coming times. Because they're going to happen and we are going to live through them. Just like Daniel in the lion's den. He lived through it. And he prayed for Nebuchadnezzar and 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 he had his friends burnt up. And he's still praying for, for all of these, the, these kings and these people that are trying to kill him. And he's praying for them. And Jesus did the same thing. So we need to do the same thing. We need to pray for our enemies and pray that the Lord keep us safe in these times ahead. And stop telling people, no, this isn't going to happen. Do I know what's going to happen? I have no idea what's going to happen. No idea. But everything I'm telling you can be used in multiple scenarios and we are going to go through some stuff. What makes us any better than the Christians in Saudi Arabia that are being killed by the Muslims? Or, or in you know all of these desert areas that are being killed by the Muslims? Or in the UK where people are being tortured and raped and all these things by, by Muslims. What makes us better than that? Because we're in America. Do we really want to be the people that sit up on a high hill prideful and think that bad things can never happen to us? The, trust me, being poor and all the things that we suffer through as Christians here are nothing compared to what's happening in other countries where people are getting their arms and their legs hacked off and all their heads chopped off. All these things can happen. They really could happen and they will happen. What do you think they have guillotines for? And you say, oh, that's not going to happen until ap after the rapture. Fine, it's not going to happen until after the rapture and, and we're all gone. We're all going to be safe and everybody else is going to be tortured. Fine. I get what you're saying. I get that. But do you really want to have that be your plan of attack? Do you want that to be your, you know, modus operandi, that that's what you think? No. You should plan for the worst and hope for the best. And... If you ever see me like upset or any of that stuff, it's not because I'm upset about my life. My life is like great. My life is great. I'm upset for all of the people out there that are so blind and they say all these hateful things because I'm upset for you. I'm not upset for me. I love Jesus Christ. I'm going to heaven someday and I don't deserve to go and he paid for all of my sins. And, and he gave me things like I prayed for my wife, Jackie, for two years while I was chain smoking butts on my front porch. And the grace of God, he gave me exactly what I asked for. And I didn't even know what I wanted. And that's why I'm telling you, I've been praying for years that he would warn me before these things come to pass. And what he's doing in my dreams is warning me and he's warning other people. 
And I don't know exactly the procession of events except what people's dreams say and what I've dreamed. But don't wouldn't you rather have a few things to prepare for that? Wouldn't you rather have like a, a boat like Noah? Wouldn't you rather do like prepare to help other people around you? You're going to be selfish and just sit there and say nothing's going to happen. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to sit on my pretty little hill and be fine. I'm, nobody's going to bother me. I'm going to stick my head in the sand and everything's going to be great. Well, that's not the plan that the New World Order has for you. That's not the plan that the evil people in this world have for you. That's not what the line of Cain has for you. They want you dead. Go look at the Georgia Guidestones. Go look out your window and look at the chemtrails. Go look at all the things that they put in your food. Go go look at Sonomex and all the stuff they put in Pepsi and, and, and Mountain Dew and all the stuff that's aborted baby fetuses for, for flavoring for your food. Go look at all that stuff and tell me I'm wrong. Go go look at, go look it all up and tell me I'm wrong. Because I'm not wrong. So, let's pray for these people that are going to the pits of hell for what they've done. Pray that they turn around. Pray that they have a, a Paul moment and instead of killing Stephen, they turn around and start becoming one of the greatest greatest disciples and apostles that, that went around as a prisoner preaching unto people that didn't deserve it like me. God bless you guys. I really love you all and I hope you have a great day.